closer than usual because of the near encounter with death. Now, the day doesn't really become any different until an hour before Bennett is expected home, and then I start setting up. When I set up the machine, well, first I have to sterilize a scissor, and then I go into the dialysis room and I put the coil together. And that's, that's very routine and, and very simple. Then I uh, wash out the tub, and I think, isn't this silly, a great big bathtub, and here I am washing it out so carefully, because that's exactly what it looks like, is a big old bathtub. But really, it's a very routine thing. I don't think I think too much about, uh, about setting up. The Travanol twin coil is the heart of the artificial kidney, developed by Dr. Willem Koff. It is compact, portable and always ready for use. The coil consists of two tubes made of a semi-permeable membrane, each approximately 18 feet in length. The tubing is embedded in parallel arrangement between thin sheetings of fiberglass netting. The blood coming from the body circulates through these tubes. As the blood flows through the coil, the impurities are diffused into the solution through the tubing walls because the chemical concentration of the solution is less than that of human blood. The dialyzing solution for the 100 liter tank circulates through this netting and around the tubes. The chemical content of the solution closely approximates that of normal human plasma. For the sake of efficiency and compactness, the tubes and fiberglass netting are rolled into a coil. Inlet and outlet tubes are attached the unit is sterilized by the manufacturer and it's provided ready for immediate use. While I'm putting the coil together, I think that's the time I just I think about the same things you'd think about when you were cleaning the house or anything else. And uh, then after I have the sterile scissor out of the water and uh, I, I'm getting the drugs into the into the needles and things like that, then I, I have to think about Bennett. And so I do, I guess, during the rest of the procedure. The rest of the procedure, just priming the machine. First the inside of the machine with saline, and the pressure up very high. If it isn't good, it, it won't get up very high. And priming it with blood, and I don't do that until he's home. And then I prime it with the unit of his own blood, usually, which we had collected at the end of the last dialysis about once in case there's a blood reaction. And he's a local doctor. And he's on call in case anything should happen during the dialysis normally, but not here. He only comes when we have to give him somebody else's blood. Uh, one of the nicest features of this program is the fact that it's not only foolproof and easy, but things are, are already pre-sterilized. They're used once, they're thrown away. Uh, the coil which you put together, that just means you connect two or three tubes. The rest of it is, is together already. And after you're through with dialysis, you just put it back in the little bag it comes in and you throw it away. And this makes it much less time consuming than having to empty it completely and sterilize it yourself and use it again. And I think it would also mean that there would probably be less chance of any defects in it because it is tested once before we get it at the at the factory and then we get it in, in prime condition I really don't remember being afraid to learn the machine or ever thinking would I be able to learn it or wouldn't I be able to learn it I remember learning it very very slowly at the hospital and at first only the very impersonal things the things where I wasn't really doing anything to Bennett, just to the machine. And there wasn't any fear connected with that. I think the only fear was that of, of being alone and being responsible. As Debbie makes a final check of the equipment, Bennett leaves his office for the trip home. It wasn't long after I came home that I was able to drive uh, 
to work. And being able to drive uh, was very important, I think, in my psychological recovery. It, it, it gave me a kind of freedom. Uh, up till that point, when I went to go to work, I had to have somebody drive me to work. And now I could go uh, to work, or we could uh, go out to dinner, and I could uh, resume my normal activities. The automobile as a symbol of freedom, of personal independence. Who would have believed it? Bennett is convinced of it. Determining what time to leave for the office or the plant, deciding when and where to take the family out to dinner or to the beach or to a parade, deciding to leave the office or plant early, either as a luxury or out of necessity. All these decisions we take in stride and think very little of them until something restricts us from making them. Then they are important. Uh, I, I wasn't apprehensive about Debbie uh, running the machine. She, she, I think she had uh, uh, a lot of fears concerned with it. Uh, uh, I remember uh, vaguely that she said uh, she didn't think she could run it. You know, the first time the doctors weren't going to show up. And by uh, writing all the steps uh, that we would have to follow sequentially in a little book, I said, well, there's nothing to worry about. If you forget what to do, I'll tell you. Uh, I've got it all written down. And uh, she was able to do it. The first time, or the first two times, Bennett was on the machine, I wasn't even allowed in the room. And then I was allowed in the room, but I wasn't allowed to do anything, just to watch. And then they allowed me to do just one new thing each time. And it began with just putting the coil together. It was several weeks after I was allowed to go into the dialysis room that they actually had me attaching Bennett. And it wasn't until we were in this house with a doctor and a nurse here that I was allowed to give him heparin, which is uh, a drug which stops clotting. I've always been a warrior. If you mean, do I worry about him more now because he's on the machine? I, I, I guess, honestly, I'd have to tell you slightly more, but very slightly more. Whenever Bennett would come home late, I would worry before he was on the machine and before there was anything wrong with him. Uh, now I worry more only if he, he goes on a trip when there's nobody else with him. Then I feel if something happened, they might not know he needs the machine or something. Uh, I don't think I really worry about him much more than I did before he was sick. I can't tell you I don't worry about our future. And well, I can't tell you I don't worry about a few complications like, like his shunt clotting. But as far as uh, on a daily basis, worrying when he leaves for work, will he come home? No, I, I really don't worry more that way. I had no idea that Bennett was as sick as he actually was. And then the doctor told me that it was really only a matter of weeks or perhaps months, and that there was nothing he could do that what Bennett had with, with Bright's disease and that this was the final stage of it. The entire home dialysis program takes approximately five hours twice each week. Both Deborah and Bennett consider the procedure simple and nearly foolproof. Debbie learned the techniques of handling the equipment in just a few weeks. Should something go wrong during the procedure, sensitive safety devices turn off the equipment and there's no threat to Bennett. During dialysis, the family physician is only a telephone call away. And if for some reason Debbie should be unable to handle the dialysis, there's always help nearby. It's, uh it been nice to be here for uh, Michael's eighth birthday and George's sixth. And I have uh, tried to, to, to spend a little more time with them. I guess I was... I was shocked when I realized how sick Bennett was, because I hadn't realized. And when the doctor insisted that he go into the hospital, I was sort of... Uh, I didn't want him to go. I begged him not to. 
And I thought it was just going to be for more tests and it wouldn't do any good. And he was so uncomfortable, he went anyhow. And I had no idea that this really would have been, would have been his last month. And it, it certainly would have been, if he would have had that long. And the doctors gave me no hope at first of, of Bennett's living and wanted me to, to take him home and care for him as long as I could. And when I couldn't care for him anymore, to bring him back to the hospital. And it was a few days after that that he called me up and said that there was a, a program at the Peter Bent Brigham and if Dr. Merrill could fit him in and thought he was a good candidate, there was a chance of our getting a home kidney machine. Now, I had no idea what a home kidney machine was, but I knew it meant that Bennett had a chance to be alive. <laughs>